Now let's talk about uh, the treatment of research and development expenditure. As we know that uh, the R&D expenditure is considered as uh, an intangible asset. So an intangible asset, but the expenditure on research is uh, to be charged as an expense in the books of accounts. Plus uh, the development expenditure is also sometimes charged as an expense or sometimes it is capitalized. But as far as the tax treatment is concerned, first of all, there are two possible uh, treatment. One depends on whether the company concerned is a small and medium enterprise or a company concerned is a large company. So if a small and medium enterprise incurred research and development expenditure following other rules. So an SME can deduct an additional 130% of qualifying expenditure for tax purpose. Now that is very important in order to encourage a company to spend on R and D the tax authority allows an allowable expenditure of excess 130%. That is if someone is uh, spending 100,000, then uh, 230, uh, or you can say that 100,000 and 130,000 in excess. So it means 230,000 is being allowed as an allowable expense. And if that deduction creates a loss, it may be surrendered in return for cash payment from HMRC. So if profit is not enough so that it can be offset against that profit, then you can ask HMRC uh, for a cash payment and cash payment will be equal to the 14.5% 14, 14 of the amount that is surrendered. If surrendered in return for cash, losses cannot be carried forward for future relief. So you have the options available that you can surrender or uh, if you don't want to surrender then you can get the relief now as far as the qualifying expenditure on r d is concerned it is included the staff cost directly involved in r d work including any nic class one and class one a payment and pension contribution similarly agency cost for R and D purpose, material cost, water, fuel, and power for research and development, software directly used in research and development, and payment to subcontractor, but only 65% will be eligible for the enhanced tax credit. Following will not be part of such enhanced credit, and that is contribution to other bodies for independent research an expenditure covered by grant and subsidies. So let's see a question. DPLC is considered as a small company for R&D purpose. Following expenditure were incurred for the year ended December 2019. Number one is market research 8,000. Staff directly involved in R&D that is uh, 20,000. Admin support for R&D. 5,000 heat and light, new software and agency for temporary R&D staff that is 10,000. So as far as the uh, expenditure is concerned on this, we have to advise that how much tax relief is available against that R&D cost. So as far as the expenditure is concerned, let's calculate. So those expenditure which are not uh, allowed for additional expense, although that are allowable. So that are allowable expenses, but not qualified for enhanced benefit. First of all, let me take it out this. So first of all is market research and market research cost was 8,000 and admin staff cost that is 5,000. So in this way, 13,000 is an allowable expense, but this is not qualified for enhanced benefits. Now allowed expense for additional relief.
and such as the leftover amount that is staffing cost which is 20,000 heat and light which is 9,000 software 4,000 agency staff and that is 10,000 so in this way the cost is 43,000 now on the basis of that the relief or the enhanced allowable cost or expenditure is 43,000 multiplied by 230 percent that is 98,900 so 98,900 is an allowable amount so total allowable amount is 98,900 and 13,000 which is normal allowable amount not qualified for enhanced benefit so in this way total allowable amount is 1,11,900 but already expense that would be charged already in profit and loss account would be the expense incurred that is 13,000 plus 43,000 that is 56,000 so what is the additional amount of expense that is available that is 1119000 minus 56,000 and that is additional benefit that is 55,900 is available against this R&D. Now let's talk about the uh, treatment of uh, large company. So in case of large company, the large company can opt for claims such as known as above the line tax credit but if large company opt for above the line tax credit there is no option of surrendering loss for cash repayment although they may receive tax credit and can't claim relief for payment made to SMEs but they can claim relief for contribution made to a qualifying body such as charity university for independent research provided that research for for relevant for trade purpose. Now, if large company opt for above the line tax credit method, then 12% of qualifying R and D expenditure is included as taxable income in, in total taxable profit at the rate of 19% and then deduct from the corporate tax liability. So if company is profitable, it will give a net benefit of 9.72% of the qualifying expenditure. For example, if qualifying expenditure is 10,000, then tax credit is 12% of expenditure, take 12% of expenditure, that is 1200, deduct 12% 12 of expenditure at the rate of 19%, that is 2 to 8, so the amount of relief is 972 of 10,000 value and that becomes 9.72%. So if company has no corporation tax liability or insufficient tax liability to net off all tax credit, then the excess will be paid in cash net of tax up to a maximum amount that is equal to the company's pay and IC liability for R&D employees. You cannot get more than that. If the repayable tax credit exceed the maximum cash repayment allowed, the remaining tax credit can be carried forward and offset against the first available future corporate corporation tax liability. Or you might get a group relieved against the group profits. Similarly, if any capital expenditure 
on research and development during research and development so that capital expenditure qualifies for 100% r&d capital allowance in the year of purchase so deductible as trading expense in the form of capital allowance but it does not qualify for additional r&d relief and when capital asset is sold proceed is treated as a balancing charge and are therefore treat tax as trading income so in case of any capital expenditure on r&d project the capital expenditure we will get capital allowances that is 100% capital allowances immediately but in case of sale of that asset a balancing charge will arise and you have to treat that as taxable income now let's apply this concept into this example for example G, G Limited is a small and medium enterprise for research and development purpose and the expenditure which is a qualified expenditure incurred for the year ended December 19 was 8500 and C Limited is a large company for R&D purpose and expenditure which is being qualified was incurred as 60,000 advise the company for any tax relief available so first of all let's talk about the uh, small and medium enterprise uh, tax relief available and the savings of uh, against this so first of all the normal relief against expenditure so that is 8500 so if expense is 8500 you will get a tax saving of tax rate is 19 percent will get a tax saving of 1615 now due to additional relief so how much additional relief is available so 8500 we have already taken so the additional relief is available 130 percent and that additional relief will attract uh, a tax saving of multiply by 19 percent and that will attract a tax saving of 2100 so total tax savings is 1615 plus 2100 and that is 3715 for an SME now as far as uh, the large company is concer concerned so the expenditure total is 60,000 so this is the normal expenditure 60,000 and and on that normal expenditure there will be a saving of 60,000 multiply by 19 percent and that is 11,400 now for tax credit election that is above the line tax credit rate becomes 9.72 percent so you can directly apply the above the line tax credit 60,000 multiply by 9.72 percent and uh, that becomes 5832 so this is the relief and so total savings will be available that is the normal 11400 plus 5832 and that becomes 17232 in a state the tax credit can be identified as so 12 percent is shown as income that is 7200 and deduct the amount uh, 
that is 60,000 multiply by 12 percent multiply by 19 percent deduct that amount and that is 1368 so as a result the relief is 5832 so this is the same you can use both now let's talk about the treatment of uh, intangible asset we can classify intangible asset into two types for tax purpose. One is the goodwill and other than goodwill. Those intangible assets which are not considered as goodwill. But let's talk about the other assets that uh, not goodwill first. So whatever is the expenditure charged in profit and loss account against intangible asset are allowed for tax purpose. So that means accounting purpose uh, the expense for accounting purpose is same as expense for tax purpose the cost that is directly written off included royalties internally generated assets and those costs which are capitalized so it will be charged in profit and loss account via a process of called amortization or impairment so in that case no adjustment to profit is needed because whatever is being charged in profit and loss account has been same is allowable for tax purpose but you can opt for an election that is an alternative treatment that is to write off the cost of a capitalized intangible asset against profit for tax purpose and if there is any uh, debit then that particular debit amortization impairment would then be disallowed so whatever is the capitalized amount for tax purpose you can opt for as an as, as an expense so what you have to do add back amortization and impairment and then deduct the full cost of capitalized assets so that election is suitable where amortization on accounting basis is less than four percent per annum and asset if asset is not amortized due to indefinite useful life then obviously you're not getting anything in profit and loss account then it's beneficial because uh, if you are writing it off from the so you can see that you will get four percent relief so if you're not uh, getting if you're not getting anything So it's better to claim this or if you're getting 4% less than 4% amortization rate, then it is beneficial to get the election. But if you're already getting more than 4% amortization rate, then it is not beneficial to get this election. And if uh, there is time apportionment needed, then that particular 4% is for, for per, per annum basis. So you have to apply the time apportionment. This election is irrevocable and must be made within two years of the end of the accounting period in which that expenditure is being incurred. Now, if there is a disposal of that particular intangible asset on disposal, proceed is compared with tax written down value to give profit and loss on disposal. The profit on disposal will be same for accounting purpose and tax purpose unless election is made because if election is made, then accounting value of asset and the tax value of asset will be different now as far as goodwill is concerned uh, for goodwill amortization and impairment related to goodwill is not allowed for tax purpose so if any amount has been charged in the profit and loss account for the corporation then it is to be added back in case of disposal compare proceed with the cost to get a profit and then profit on that disposal of goodwill is treated as trading income but if the there is a loss, so in case of loss, it will be set off against current year total profit. Or you can get group relief if 75% criteria has been satisfied. Or you can offset this loss against future total profit for the corporation. There is no carry back option available. So if there is any loss on the sale of goodwill, there will be no carry back option available. A special intangible rollover relief if intangible asset is sold and proceed is used to acquire another intangible asset such as 
uh, we did it in CGT as rollover relief. Within 12 months before or up to 36 months after disposal, this is the time frame, then part of profit is deferred. Now, part of profit is deferred. So the maximum deferral is lower of disposal proceed or amount reinvested, whatever is the lower amount, and deduct the cost of original intangible asset from this. And this is the value that is the maximum deferral. For example, take an example, sale proceed is 100,000 and cost was 50,000 and amount reinvested is uh, 90,000. So we'll take 90,000 minus cost that is 50,000. So 40,000 is the maximum deferral and the remaining is uh, taxable. For example, an intangible asset has been purchased at a cost of 20,000. Subsequently, it was sold at 30,000 when tax written down value of intangible asset was 12,000. And afterwards, another intangible asset has been purchased within three months. Calculate taxable profit if intangible rollover relief is claimed and the new intangible asset cost either 35,000. First example, second is 25,000. So proceed is 30,000. In first case, the above then proceed has been reinvested. And in the second case, less than 30,000 has been reinvested. So let's calculate one by one. So in case of uh, cost that is 35,000 of the reinvestment, make it case one. So calculate profit first. Sale proceed is what? 30,000. Tax WDV. That is 12,000. So for tax purpose, the profit is 18,000. That is trading profit. Now rollover relief you have to claim. So how much rollover relief is claimed? So let's work out the rollover relief. So whatever is the uh, amount of rollover relief. So take proceed. Proceed is 30,000 reinvested amount that is 35,000 so take the lower of value so take proceed lower of value and deduct the cost of asset and the cost was 20,000 so this is the maximum amount that can be deferred so 10,000 is the amount that is to be deferred and the remaining amount that is 8,000 is taxable trading profit. Now in the second case, part B, the investment cost is less than 30,000, that is 25,000. Now in this case, the sale proceed was 30,000. Tax WDV is uh, the same, that is 12,000. So we have uh, 18,000 of trading profit. Now how much to be deferred? How much is taxable? Let's apply the rule. Selling price is 30,000. Reinvestment is 25,000 take lower off so take lower off deduct the original cost 20,000 so this 5,000 is the amount to be deferred and if 5,000 is deferred then 13,000 is taxable profit. So this is how an intangible asset is to be taxed depending on whether it's a goodwill, whether it's a, uh, 
other intangible asset and special rollover relief is also be concerned. 